If you're manually dragging and dropping your music files into every single new project, then I've got some good news for you. There's an easier way. There's actually a few different methods which you can use to create a music library of sorts within DaVinci Resolve. So you don't need to keep importing stuff. Music is already there, ready and waiting, and it's all good to go. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at them as well as talking about some of their pros and cons. Now, if you don't have a music collection, why not check out this video's sponsor, Audio? Because you can get a one-year subscription to Audio so you get all of their music and all of their sound effects for just 59 bucks. But more on those a little bit later on. Now, before you actually do anything, before you start messing around within DaVinci Resolve, the number one thing, the first thing you should do is to create a music resources folder on your system. Whether you're on a Mac, PC, Linus, Lin Linux, oh, blah, 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 or Linux, there you go, you should make a secure folder. Now, the reason for that is because you want to put your music in a place which is not going to get moved or deleted. If you just put your music from your downloads straight into DaVinci Resolve and then clear your downloads, you'll obviously break all the connections within DaVinci Resolve, which is going to break your music library. So all I do, I've got a resources folder, and within there I put a bunch of stuff. I've got one simply called audio, and within there I've got music, sound effects, and visual effects. So now if we open up the music folder, you can see we've just got a bunch of tracks within here. So I highly recommend that you do that before you do any of the other methods within this video. Cool. Once that's done, we can start to set things up. Now the first method I'm going to show you is probably one that a lot of people already know, and that's using power bins. Now, if you've never heard of a power bin before, a power bin is simply a bin or a folder which is shared amongst all of your projects. So if I start a new project, the bin is there, ready to go. So I can put my music in it, music's there, ready to go. If I go and open an old project, the bin's there, ready to go. So it just means that this music is available to you whatever project you open. Now, the main con for a power bin is they're not live. So if you download some new music, you then have to make sure that you import that into the power bin so that it's there ready for next time. It's not a big deal, but it's worth just noting. Now, if you've moved to DaVinci Resolve 18.1, like most of us, power bins are ever so slightly different to enable. So let me just show you how they work, how to turn them on, all that sort of good stuff. So here we are on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. Now within my media pool, which you can see over here, if you don't see your media pool, just click media pool, top left hand corner, you can see that I've got power bins here. So this is where our power bins hide. If you don't see power bins, all you need to do, click on these little three dots just in the top right hand corner of your media pool, and then tick the show power bins box so that your power bins are available. If you're on an older version of DaVinci Resolve, you click on view, and then there's an option within this menu to show power bin. So it just depends on what version of DaVinci Resolve you're using. Now to actually get your music into your power bin, it's incredibly easy. On the left hand menu, click on master so that we're inside our power bin. And then I'm just gonna find that folder just outside of Resolve. So I've just got the folder open here. And I'm gonna grab the music folder. I'm gonna click, hold my mouse and drag over. Now I'm not going to release it here because that will import the individual files and I want the actual folder to be kept as well. So we're going to drop it over here on the left underneath master and that's going to create a music folder for us as we can see. And then I've got all of my music tracks within here. Now you can do this for as many folders as you like. So I'm actually just going to go back to the master one. I'm going to grab the visual effects and the sound effects, pop those over there too. So we've got music, sound effects and visual effects and then we can just open them up. At any time I can grab a music track and just pop it on my timeline. If I need to update the music, so if I've downloaded any new tracks, all I then do, I can come to this music folder, I can drag and drop if I want to, or I can right click within the bin, and then I can go to import media, browse to the new music, and then make sure that this power bin is updated. There it is, power bins, quick, simple, easy to do. Just make sure that you've got that safe folder so that the links don't get broken and remember to update it manually with any new tracks. Now, if you're in need of music or sound effects, then why not check out this video sponsor, Audio. They've given me a special discount code so that you can get a one year subscription for just $59. That will give you access to their massive music and sound effects catalogs, unlimited downloads, new music and sound effects added daily, includes YouTube monetization, a universal license, and no upgrade fees at all. Now that universal license is really important because it's not just YouTube, you're licensed for all of the music and sound effects in literally any project. You can use that music for TV commercials, just general commercial products, even video games. You're free to use the music however you like. There's a link down in the description below. Go give that a click and then you use the code Alex70 at checkout to get your 70 cent off. 59 bucks. 
why not give it a go? Now, next up, we're gonna hop into the media page. Now, this isn't actually a music library within Resolve. It's just a really easy way of accessing the music within that folder that you've created. So it's kind of not exactly a sound music library, but it works, trust me. Now, the benefit of this is it's a live folder. So you never have to update anything. It's always there, it's always live, and everything is always ready to go. Now, this one's really quick and won't take long. So let's hop onto the media page and take a look. So let's jump onto the media page and we're gonna make sure that we've got our media storage open, top left-hand corner. And then you should see all of your drives on your computer listed here. So we need to navigate to that music folder. Now here's a real quick tip for you. Rather than having to actually drill through, I'm just gonna open this folder just again within File Explorer. I'm gonna grab my music folder and just drag and release over here. And it's gonna automatically just drill down to that location. We've not actually imported anything. We've just said, this is the folder I wanna look at show it me and it's just drilled right down for us. So this is that folder. This is all the music within that folder. Now, if we right click on music on the left hand side and there's an option to add folder to favorites and then that folder will appear here on our favorites. So we open a brand new project again, we just jump into media, we click on music and all of the music is here ready to go. And then if we want to import it into our project, we just click, drag down here. You can see we've got our usual master. This is actually our media pool down below. We can just drop it in there, jump back onto the edit page, and our music is in there. Now, as mentioned, the benefit of this is it's a live folder. The con, you have to jump onto the media page. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. But it is a live folder, which means you never need to actually update anything within DaVinci Resolve. So let's just hop on to audio and... Let's just go with a video theme, which I've probably never downloaded anything from before. Let's just go with fashion. Now, audio is great because you can just click on these waveforms to listen to the songs at any point rather than having to start from the beginning every single time. Let's go with this one. We've got end of lives. So we're just going to download this. We're going to create the license. So we're licensed to use this music wherever we like. Now, just outside of DaVinci Resolve, we're going to go to my music folder and we're just going to paste that within there. It's MHC featuring something or other. So now if we go back to Resolve. Again, I've started a new edit. We just jump into the media page. We go to music. It's right there. We can double click. So I've listened to it. We can drop it into our media pool and edit and off we go. So it's really cool. Now the next method is probably the most permanent sort of, it feels the most built in method in DaVinci Resolve and that is using the built in sound library. So if you didn't know, there is a built-in sound library, obviously, within DaVinci Resolve. Now, this was put in there a few versions back. There is a Foley sounds library you can go and download for free. That's linked down below if you haven't heard of that before. It's loads of like real-life noises which you can use within your edits if you want to. Now, the sound library, again, it's always there, but it's not live. You do need to make sure you update it, and it can get a little bit cumbersome when you overfill it and then remove things and... Yeah, it can be a bit messy, but when it works, it's really nice and easy to access. So I'm going to show you the bare bones of it first of all, and then I'll show you a few ways to create some additional custom folders within it as well. So back on the edit page. Now, the sound library exists on both the edit page and within Fairlight. So right at the top here, you can see we've got sound library and we can give that a click. There's also a link down here to download that Foley sound library if you want to. On Fairlight, it's also within here, you can see we've got the sound library and it looks exactly the same. Just for ease, I'm gonna stick with using it on the edit page. Now, if we click on this little drop down here icon, you can see it says local database and any of my databases will be listed here. When I say database, I'm talking about the project library. So they've changed the name of it. When you click on the little house icon or whenever you first load DaVinci Resolve, this is what we're talking about. These are the local libraries. This is where the sound library is stored. So I'm gonna stick with my local database, and as you can see, we have nothing in it at the moment. To add music, we simply click on the three little dots at the very top, and we go to add library. Then we just need to browse to the folder which contains our music, which mine here is simply called music. We're gonna give it a click, hit select folder. It's gonna have a little scan through that folder. It's added 39 clips, so we can click okay. And now we have all of our music within this sound library. So we can search for it by clicking on search and then typing in the name. So everything is labeled audio, so I could just put AUD and it'll list it within there. If I want to see everything, we can just simply put three stars or three asterisks within there, 
and then all of our music is listed here. Again, we can double click, we can listen through it, we can do I's and O's to mark in and O points, and then we can drag to add onto our timeline. It's always there, it's always ready to go. Blackmagic, if you're watching, I'd love for that to rescan whenever you open up DaVinci Resolve. It seems like an obvious thing to do. You set a folder, it rescans for any new stuff and then automatically imports them. That would be amazing if it did that. It doesn't. I hope they improve that in the future because that'd be really, really cool. If you've added some new music to that folder, you do then need to rescan. You can also add however many folders you want. So that's obviously got that music folder in there. I could go and create another music folder on a different drive and then just repeat the same process and put as many different folders into this sound library as I wanted to. It's the same process, but let me just run through it super quick. I need to download another song, so let's just pick any old one this time from audio. Once again, we'll give this a download and we're gonna pop it in our folder and then we'll jump back into Resolve. Now, it won't automatically update, so we need to go to the three little dots, add library, browse to music, click on select folder, it's gonna say, do you want to rescan this path? We do, so we're gonna click yes. And it's gonna say it's only found one new clip. So it's added that new one. So now we've got 40 in here rather than 39. So what about if you've got multiple different libraries for different genres or different projects, plus you want one for sound effects maybe, you want to have loads of different options within there. Well, that's actually really easy to do. You just need to create some new project libraries or databases, which isn't as drastic as it sounds. So let me show you that and let me show you how it works. So this one is my music. I'm gonna keep this one within my local database. I'm happy with that. But I want to create another database purely for sound effects. So we're gonna click on our little house icon to open up our project manager. Now I've only got this one local database on this machine. So what we need to do is to add another one. So we're gonna come down to this add project library and then we're gonna leave it as create and just give this a name and I'm gonna call this sound effects. And then I'm gonna click browse. Again, you just need to find a secure location on your PC. This is just saving this database. It's not a huge file, it's not massively important, but you don't want it to be overwritten or deleted. So I've just made a folder called Project Libraries, and we're gonna pop this one within here. So sound effects on one of my drives, we'll hit Create. So now we've got our local database, which has got all of my main projects in it, and now we've got this sound effects project library as well. Now you don't actually need to be in this database to access it, this is the main benefit. So I'm gonna go back to my local database because this is the one I use for all of my projects, all of my editing, all of my YouTube, whatever. And we're gonna open up a project. So here we are, back on the edit page. Now if we go to sound library once again, we click on our little icon to get our drop down, local database. You can now see we have one within here called sound effects. So we give that one a click. There's no music or sound effects within there at the moment. So we're gonna click the three little dots Add library, sound effects, select folder. 27 sound effects have been imported. Let's do my three little asterisks. And now I've got all of my sound effects within here. And it just helps to keep things a bit tidier. If I need music, I'm gonna to go to my local database. If I need sound effects, I'm gonna to go to sound effects. Now, as you can see, I've actually got some other databases. I've got one for my Mr. Alex tech stuff and one for my Kofi stuff. So again, if there's any particular music I just use when doing Kofi, I can drop them into that Kofi database. And you can make as many of these databases or libraries as you want to keep everything nice and tidy. Three different options for creating your own music libraries within DaVinci Resolve. Each of them has their pros and cons, so just pick the one which works best for you. Or if you can't decide, just use a bit of all of them. Whatever works, there's no right or wrong answer. Just have a play with them and see how you get on. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out audio, link down in the description below. Take it easy, I'll catch you next time.